guys. So, um, I had to have the paramedics called last night. It kind of crossed my mind, like, maybe they're not even going to come because of all the COVID stuff. And they're probably, like, overwhelmed. And if you say it's something else, they're just going to be like, we, we, we don't have the capacity to deal with it. But yeah, they, they did come. And just to give you guys the backstory about why they came. If you've seen the last couple videos, you know I'm staying in a hostel in Budapest. And... I do smoke weed occasionally, sometimes more than others. I only plan to be here for two weeks and I was gonna be fine, but now I'm stuck here longer and things are also a lot more stressful than I had anticipated, especially because of clashes with certain other guests here. So I asked one of the guests if he smoked and he's like, yeah, sure, you want, I can get you some right now. That night we smoked together, what he had was fine. The next day he, he brought me some and I smoked it, also fine. And then tonight I asked if he wanted to smoke and he said he didn't have anything, he was gonna go pick it up and he asked if I wanted to go with him and I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And as soon as I got up to get ready to go, I already felt like I was way too exhausted to be going anywhere. But I kind of have this hope that smoking helps with the uh, post-exertional malaise. So we walk out the building, we're going toward the the, the stop to, to get the, the bus or whatever, and there's a guy standing outside this 24-hour drugstore. The guy I'm with goes up to him like, hey friend, can you help me out? And I was like, what's going on and then I realized a second later like oh you can smell he's smoking weed. The three of us walk down a ways uh, behind this sort of like uh, what is this called like this thing where like the with the restaurants have when you eat outside and it's like covered in a tent and we go stand behind that he pulls out this tiny little bag and drops a few buds into it. The, the guy I was with was asking for his number so that maybe he could get stuff from him in the future and he's like no just this once I'm not a dealer. We're like right across from the hostel but we have to like go back inside so we can roll the joint. The guy I'm with is telling me yeah he said it's really strong. And I'm like okay fine. Um, so we go in we roll the joint we come back out to smoke and you know, normally you do your like puff puff pass. When I uh, passed it to him, I don't know, it was maybe like, maybe I did it like once or twice, but I felt like I had enough, like it's okay, you can finish it. And he was smoking and I think he kind of felt like it was a lot to finish on his own. There was another guy out smoking with us, but he didn't want it. Um. So then like as it got low and it was like almost the end, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take like one more hit. And then I was really just like, oh wow, no, it's like, it's too much, it's too strong. Like he said it was strong, but it's really strong. Uh, which was also kind of surprising for me because, you know, I, I, I have phases where like I might smoke once a week, once every few days. I could go months without smoking anything. Um, but for the last month before I came here, I was smoking every day. And normally I smoke like half a joint, but it got to the point where when I did get high, it was a very light high, which I really like. But I could also smoke the entire joint and still barely feel it. And then the stuff that I had gotten from this guy before, or when we had smoked together, wasn't really any stronger than what I was used to. So I wasn't really expecting anything different. Even if this guy said it was strong, I wasn't expecting it to be that strong. And as we're coming inside, we're like laughing. And I was joking like, oh, you know, if you're laughing, it must be really good, right? We come up inside and I go like straight for the fridge, grab my food. We sit down and I'm eating. And then I feel my food get stuck in my throat because of my EOE. And, you know, I have to sort of like just sit there and like wait for it to pass and it was you know he could tell something was wrong he's like are you okay and you know and I don't know maybe that that in hindsight that could have been what started this whole thing um 
but it was like right after that where I started feeling like it was too much and I was like I, I heard that uh, coffee attaches to the same receptors as cannabis so if you get too high you can drink coffee and like bring yourself down faster so I told him I wanted coffee and I just meant like I wanted to smell the powder um, and he went and actually made me a coffee um, but the point where he got up to go in the kitchen I felt like I needed to, to throw up so um, I I wasn't sure when he first went in the kitchen if he was like going to get a trash bag or something for me to throw up into um, but I I went into uh, the toilet and 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 you know threw up in there um, and kind of like you know I flushed and cleaned myself up and it was like there was no trace and then I go into the kitchen he's like asking me how the coffee maker works and I'm like I don't drink coffee I have no idea how it works and he's like getting it together and I'm you know really not in the best place like I'm barely speaking and I feel this like wave coming up like I'm probably gonna have to throw up again and like I'm trying to tell myself no it's okay calm down but it gets to the point where I go running off into the bathroom again and I made it to the toilet and then when I'm like going to the sink to like clean up I ended up like throwing up in the sink a little bit more too but um, I was able to like rinse it down so again it's like I, you know at least I was glad it didn't like make a big mess everywhere and then when I go out there's this coffee sitting on the table and there's one for me and this other lady who's in there and I don't know it was like about that time he left and I guess like went to bed and I'm sitting there at the table with this coffee but I'm just like literally catatonic like I don't know what strain it was but I was catatonic like just kind of like staring off uh, sometimes my my eyes would be closed um, just these like trying to like breathe um, but I don't know like I, I could barely like pick up the coffee and drink it I think the the lady there could tell that something was going on from the start and I don't know if like if she could smell it on us or just like by the way I was acting but I don't know she seemed kind of like annoyed and I was like okay she she probably can tell after I sat there long enough she eventually was like are you okay and I'm like no just kind of like asking what she could do to help and I was just like I I wanted to stop and I, and I think I said that to the the guy before I was like I, I want to make it stop and I told her the same thing like whatever whatever I can do to make it stop she was saying like don't don't drink the coffee you should drink water like she gave me a glass of water and she asked if I wanted lemon in it and she goes in the room and gets like one of these plastic lemons and I was like oh like I, I had seen lemon in the fridge I thought she was gonna slice up a fresh lemon I was like this is probably not great for histamine intolerance but okay I'll try it and it was just like awful I couldn't drink it and it just it took so long till I got to the point where I could say I, I don't like lemon and uh, she poured it out and, and got me a new glass of water um, and it was like that the whole time like there were so many things I was thinking that I couldn't actually say got to the point where I was just like sitting there for such a long time just like not really there and 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 you know like I could hear everything and, and understand what was going on but I was just like barely speaking and responding and uh, she she asked me some questions like what um, I don't know like what day is it what did you eat today what month is it where are you stuff like that and I was like uh the, when she said what month is it I, I felt like it could be any time between December and May I have no clue and I just like I, I felt like you know it was like you when you're zooming in on Google Maps or something where I was just like I don't know like 
figuring out where I was again and being like, yeah, okay, I think it's, I was like, April, no, the end of March, yeah. And I figured it out. And then she asked what the day of the week was. And I said, I said, Tuesday, because while we were standing outside smoking, I asked, like, what day is it today? Is it Tuesday? And I think they said yes. Um, apparently it was Monday. I don't know if it was after midnight by then. Um, but she, she looked at the clock like she was checking to see if it was after midnight. And I was like, okay, so it's almost Tuesday. But yeah, then she's, she was saying like she wanted to call a doctor. I mean, like she was asking me for, for everything she did. She's like, you know, do you want to call a doctor? And I would like nod or shake my head or something. So it was like, you know, she knew I understood. I was responsive and everything. Um, and I'm like, but what is the doctor going to be able to do like I probably just need to wait or sleep it off or something if it's you know just a, a bad high it is she she said the the guy who works here should probably be informed and I mean I I've been thinking the same thing for like at least 10 minutes before that so I've just like nod my head and she went and got him and just before he walked in I threw up again um but that time it was like mostly water so wasn't so bad um but then I from that point I I just like I wanted to stand in the bathroom and I was like I was really torn because I felt like way too exhausted to be standing but I didn't like I didn't want to throw up again I didn't feel like I needed to right in that moment but I didn't want to go back to the the kitchen and be on the couch and have to like run to the bathroom again so I'm just like kind of stuck there in the middle and I couldn't move either way and the the guy comes in and, and like mops the floor and and the the smell of the cleaner really bothers me too and I'm just like like I'm thinking like please don't but at the same time like I guess it's necessary for something like this and and I've got much bigger problems than being in a histamine coma right now and you know, really th thinking there must have been something in, in whatever we smoked that we didn't know about. Um, and what I kind of realized with this lady kept going like, oh, this is so stupid and like, you shouldn't trust that guy who, who gave you the stuff to smoke. And I was like, well, you know, I'm thinking it, it wasn't his, he didn't even know the guy we got it from, but maybe that's what she means. It's like, we shouldn't trust someone who would trust someone they just met on the street. Like, as I, I was sitting there thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, okay, they do kind of have a reputation here. They'll say if tourists come and buy drugs on the streets, they're usually just getting, like, actual herbs or, like, oregano or flour or something, and, and they think it's drugs and have completely wasted their money. And it's just, there's, like, graffiti in, in the party area making fun of this. Um... But I've also heard from people who work in hostels that locals here take some really hard drugs and they'll get totally fucked up and you think they're normal because they're totally calm and they walk into the hostel, they ask for a room and then like 30 minutes later they just completely lose it. Um, so I didn't know, you know, I was kind of like, oh, I'm pretty sure we didn't get nothing but because I was with a local, maybe we bought something that uh, I wouldn't have chosen to take on my own. I was like, they, I've never had any other type of drugs. I don't even really consider cannabis to be a drug because it normally has a calming effect on me. You know, I use it more to deal with like stress and anxiety. I have had bad highs before, but this just felt so intense and... and like, I've had panic attacks before, and, and, you know, when I realize what's going on, I can, like, get myself to calm down, and, and just, like, telling myself to calm down was not working. So, I really thought that there were some other drugs in there, and that was the issue. I did agree to have the paramedics called, and they said they would be there in about 30 minutes. So, this the, this whole pro thought process about, like, okay, there might have been something else in there was happening while I was still sitting in the kitchen. Um just kind of like it was spurred on by her saying that that was really stupid and don't trust this guy. Um, but once I was standing in the bathroom, I started to think, well, like, what if I got the COVID and 
you know, like I, I don't feel like I've been being particularly careful. Um, and I mean, you can catch it anywhere. Like even just staying in the hostel and not going out, everyone else here is going out and meeting up with other people, um, which initially made me feel like, okay, well then I might as well go out too. And I haven't met up with anyone else. I just kind of go out and walk around. I normally keep my space from other people in general just because I'm talking and I I'm, don't want to walk directly past somebody when I'm talking on the phone and kind of like kid myself into thinking they can't hear me from like three meters away. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I was like, so yeah, like first I'm, I'm thinking there's like some other drugs in there and then I'm thinking, well, like maybe it's the COVID and when the paramedics walk in, I like, I moved over to like sit on the toilet seat and I was like, okay, this is the perfect spot because I can sit here and if I need to puke, all I have to do is turn around and you know, as, as long as I don't, and this is like the lady came in, there was like, you know, you're sitting on the toilet seat, like, just make sure you don't like shit your pants. Like if you need to use the toilet, take your pants down. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's like, as long as I remember not to like start peeing or something with my pants on, like, it's okay. I can sit on the toilet. Um, but then the paramedics come in and it was like, I was kind of like staring straight ahead. And I think like my eyes flickered when they walked in. But then when they said hi to me, it was like, I really like, you know, responded. So I'm like, okay, first of all, if they're trying to assess the situation, they, they can tell that I'm, I'm responsive. Like I can hear them. Like, even if I can barely talk, I can understand what they're saying. When they were on the phone calling the paramedics, they were, um, I, with the very little Hungarian I understand, I could understand that they were asking how old I was, and they guessed my age, and it was just like, oh, they think, I was like, oh, they think I'm younger than I am, and I was like, you know, happy about that, and, and I'm thinking, like, I could, I could correct them, I could say my age in Hungarian or English, but I'm just gonna let them think I'm a couple years younger. So then like this, uh, there's like one, the 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 woman didn't speak English, the, the guy did. So she was like, I guess, suggesting questions and, and he would translate it. Basically, all he told me was try to breathe more slowly. He kept asking me questions like, uh, do you feel, like, do you feel dizzy? Do you feel this like cramping in your arms? And you know, sometimes I'm like, yeah, not, not right now. Um, um, he asked if I, if I had thrown up a lot and I was like happy that I had the opportunity to say yes three times and you know because I had actually kept track of the number that that ended up being useful information that I can share um, and then he was asking his questions like have you had a fever in the last few days have you been coughing have you had trouble breathing and I'm like no but I know what that sounds like I know what they're trying to get at and then afterward, like the the woman came forward and she was like touching me, I guess, just to see if I had a temperature. And I don't know, it was probably like really clammy. And then I'm like, well, I mean, those are kind of symptoms I experience every day. Like I always, like if I go out and do something and exert myself, my body temperature rises and I, I feel warm to the touch. Um, I mean, like, I've coughed maybe, like, a couple times here and there. I have trouble breathing. I have asthma. I, you know, it, I might have been, like, slightly short of breath lately just because um, I've been uh, smoking tobacco because I'm short on cannabis. So, um, it, you know, just to, like, de-stress a bit. Um but you know this is all like within the realm of normal for me so then i'm like well am i am i omitting something relevant or should i omit this because this is my everyday life you know um so then at one point like the lady walked out and i'm talking to the guy and just kind of like asking questions cuz i always get really curious with this kind of stuff and i'm like I was like, do you think I have the COVID? And he said, no, that's why we asked those questions. Um, 
and I said, but the the masks, um, he goes, yeah, we, we wear these for all of these, all types of calls, no matter what it's about. Um, but if they think it's COVID related, then they come in with like the whole tent thing and like the hazmat suit and like that whole setup. And I was like, okay, like, <laughs> I, you know, I'm kind of like glad it wasn't that. And, and, and um, I said, but wearing masks to all the calls, that's something new, right? And he's like, yeah, this is like a recent thing, you know, because of COVID that they wear masks, even if it's not a COVID call, just in case. Um, and I said, like, well, what do you think it is? Like, it, it's not, um, it's, if it's not the COVID, like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, what kind of drug is it? And he said, it's, if it were drugs, I wouldn't have calmed down so quickly that I was basically just having a panic attack. And I'm like, so the paramedics came just to tell me to breathe slowly. <laughs> and that was it. I was fine. Which is like literally all they did um you know it's not like they gave me an iv or oxygen or just told me to breathe slowly and they said i could go with them to the hospital but they wouldn't recommend it because of the covid which i mean i understood and yeah then i just i started asking questions like what like what happens if both of you don't speak english or you get called to help a foreigner who doesn't speak english and they said, he said, yeah, it happens sometimes, but you sort of manage. Like he said, they had a Chinese lady that morning and there was a communication barrier, but somehow they managed to get the point across. Um, and uh, then he asked if I wanted to move into the kitchen. I, I got up and I was like really kind of unsteady, um, but I was able to walk over there on my own. And... Once I got back on the couch, he said, like, my color looked a lot better already. And then I started thinking, I would love to record this for a vlog. <laughs> and then I'm, you know, even in my mind, I'm thinking, like, I'm not totally back to normal, but I'm doing a lot better if I'm thinking that. And I, th I feel like they have the coolest uniforms, honestly. Um, and I said, I said it, like, it's really cool. It's, like, stylish. And the, I think the woman said, well, it's it's really visible because it's like this bright orange. Um, and I had a, a wheelchair when I was in the airport last time. And the person pushing the wheelchair also had some sort of like basic like first aid medical training. And um, I'm sure, pretty sure it was a different uniform, but it was, I also thought the uniform looked really cool. Like, so much cooler. Like, I was trying to explain to the person at the airport, I was like, you don't understand, like, most people who push wheelchairs, they're, like, maybe dressed normally, or they're wearing, like, an orange vest or something, but they don't have, like, uniforms like this. Um, and they probably don't have any kind of medical training either. Um, so, I gotta say, like, Hungary is impressing me in a lot of ways, and I'm reading, like, the daily updates on, like, developments with how the government is handle handling the COVID situation here, and, you know, it, it could just be the, the image they're trying to present, but from what I'm reading there, I'm really impressed. So, yeah, that's the situation, um, for now, there's... There's no indication that I have the COVID. They said just call them back if anything else happens. And I, if I do think I have it, um, there, there was nothing in the drugs. That's why the other guy was fine. Like, I just had a really intense panic attack. Which is making me think that all of this is taking a lot more of a toll on me than I realized. Because I must be incredibly stressed if that could happen, you know, and I've, I've been, like, I've seen this, like, I've been on Twitter a little bit, and I see people who are like, I really want to be productive right now, but I'm not able to do anything, and that's how I've been feeling lately, is like, I want to do stuff every day, and every day goes by, and it's like, I haven't done anything, and I'm just like, what is wrong with me? Why can't I get anything done? Is it, you know, the, the cleaning products? Is it dust? Is it pollution? Like, is it, you know, something affecting me with my chronic illnesses? Um, but I think it's, it's just everybody, like everybody's struggling. Like, yeah, there are people who are like hyperactive and, and doing a lot, 
Um, but there's a lot of people who just like can't get anything done. And, and there's someone who said like she, she doesn't feel any signs of stress, but she's not able to get anything done. And I was like, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't feel like I'm stressed. I don't feel terrified or anything. Um, you know, maybe I feel a little on edge if I hear someone cough. Um, when I went out the other night and I was the only one who wasn't wearing a mask, I felt like maybe they changed the rules and I was going to get arrested. Um, and I'm like walking on this like totally deserted street thinking maybe someone's going to like call the police and report me or something. You know, it's like you, you just feel really nervous because everything's so different and it's really eerie. But... I, I I don't feel like I'm in the crowd that is like so terrified of of what's going on. I'm just I'm. It, it's like I'm I'm stressed in a, in like a subconscious way, I guess. And um, I mean I know there are some stressors from the people in the hostel, like one person in particular who's just like driving me crazy. Um. But, like, I think this is sort of like a wake-up call that, okay, like, this is upsetting me more than I realize and really taking its toll. And I, I mean, I've, I've already had, like, a couple moments in the past few days where I'm, like, surprised that I'm so upset by what this person is doing. And maybe it's just, like, a part of that and, and, and... Like, I was reading before that about how the situation is going to be really bad for people with any sort of mental health problems or, like, domestic abuse in, in the home that they're being quarantined in, stuff like that. But somehow I didn't expect it to affect me because it's not like I'm staying with my family. Um, you know, I feel like I'm fine here. I'm with these people in this hostel that I, you know, I don't have that same, like history with them um and and you know I thought I would be fine but I mean, clearly not entirely you know maybe like it's over now like it's out of my system but I I felt really scared when I thought that I could have had the COVID and I was just like I've been too reckless and 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 I like, I'm not scared, but at the same time, I, I don't want to actually get it. Like, if I catch it, then I'm going to be, like, you know, regretting whatever I did to to expose myself. And, you know, so I... I don't know. But, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's the situation. Uh, they, they did come. They were really nice. Um... You know, I'm 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 glad they came because that was the only thing that managed to calm me down. Um, and it's uh, I mean, I, I Hungary is still like pretty much in the early stages, around like 300 cases now, so they're not like so overburdened yet. Um, but there's still a lot going on, so I'm I'm glad that they were still able to you know give me that amount of attention and it, it wasn't like it was downplayed or anything because it's so small compared to this global pandemic. Um, and they, I feel like they would understand that a lot of people are probably experiencing stuff like this right now because the world is under an incredible amount of stress. So yeah, there you have it.